Hello, today I want to give you an insight into another side project that I have started and completed in the evening hours of this week. For that let me first explain the title of this video. I have been a huge fan of the Fallout video game franchise for a long time. In fact I purchased this copy of the original Fallout game in 1998 and together with Fallout 2 it remains my favorite game to this day. One thing, among many others, that is really great about Fallout is its overall atmosphere and design. Fallout plays in the future, but one really cool thing is that it combines the technology of the late 22nd century with the design and style of the 1950s and 60s. I always thought that futuristic technology and vintage looks were a great match. That's also the reason why I prefer to build my homemade gear in old-fashioned enclosures, even though most of it is based on modern microcontrollers and switching converters. This week's project falls 100% into that category. The idea was to transplant the guts of this boring looking computer and this ordinary LCD into the enclosure of this stylish 1973 vintage CRT color television set. Part of this project was of course also the teardown of this old timer. Inside I found a very interesting switch mode power supply which is based on a magnetic amplifier and I'm planning to take a closer look at it. Some of the parts could also be used to build a high voltage generator for experimental purposes. Since we are talking about voltages in excess of 10,000 volts though, I will first have to buy some safety gear before we can do that. Furthermore, I also needed to repair the switch mode power supply of the LCD. But that again is another very complicated and quite unrelated subject. I will therefore use this video to show you how I built my Fallout style computer, while we will have a closer look at the TV's original circuits and the LCD's power supply in separate videos. Ok, so then let's get on with it. First of all, let's have a look inside this computer. The case is your average, boring, soulless, run-of-the-mill cheapo. I always despised it, but I had to use it one and a half years ago when I built up this computer because everything had to be cheap and fast. But today I take out the motherboard, which is an ASUS C60 M1i Mini ITX board. Back in 2013 it was very popular for network attached storages. I used it for an auxiliary desktop computer though. I chose the board because of its very low energy consumption. The hard drives, the on off button and the ATX power supply are the only other hardware components we will need for this project. Who needs DVD drives and stuff like that in 2015. After freeing the hardware from dust with a blowgun. We can now proceed by tearing down the old TV set. It is a Sanyo CTP4201, built in Japan in 1973 but obviously produced for the German market as can be seen by the German labels on the front panel. I will make things short here and spare you the details since this teardown will be covered in a video of its own. After removing the back panel we get a glance on some 1970s discrete electronics goodness. Clearly visible is an old fashioned non potted ferrite core that belongs to a high voltage flyback converter as well as some special high voltage diodes and resistors which are needed to power the CRT. Next, we remove the entire metal chassis that carries nearly all of the electronics. That entire unit is then disassembled in order to free the metal frame that will later carry the motherboard, the ATX power supply and the hard disk drive. The parts of the frame are then cleaned with some soapy water. After that, the frame is put together again. In the meanwhile, the CRT together with the deflection coils and the convergence unit are removed from the plastic enclosure of the TV set. With the CRT removed I can now show you that this LCD of an ordinary PC monitor picked up from the trash fits well into the old opening. But since there is still some free space around the panel, a wooden frame has first to be built. For that the old black and decker jigsaw is called into action once more. 
after the frame is cut according to the outlines of the TV's enclosure and the LCD, it is spray painted black. and put in front of the radiator in order to dry. Some time later the LCD itself is cleaned. Then its aluminium frame is slightly roughened with some sandpaper. Mounting adhesive is then applied and the painted and dried wooden frame is glued into place. A protective foil followed by some weights are applied onto the frame. After one day the glue has hardened. Now the panel can be inserted into the plastic frame and fastened with the same type of glue. Now again some time must pass for the glue to harden. I removed the metal enclosure of the LCD's power supply by the way in order to have better access to the PCBs. Surely not good for EMC, but really not a problem in this application. In the meanwhile, it is time to install the hardware components of the computer on the metal frame from inside the TV. For that, an aluminium back panel must be made. As a base, I reused this aluminium sheet salvaged from another old PC monitor. Again, the old jigsaw does a good job. Before the ATX power supply can be mounted on that panel though, I first have to lead the line and the neutral out of its enclosure in order to power both the LCD and the computer from just one power cord. I also remove some redundant wires like a power connector for a floppy drive. With some more mounting holes drilled, the ATX power supply as well as an aluminium angle plate are mounted to the panel and some more custom metal parts are needed in order to hold the mini ITX board into place. With that being done, the hard drive is installed. The second hard drive we saw before will not be reused in this machine. With the new back panel bolted to the old metal frame, the back and front modules can now finally be joined. In order to reuse the old main switch of the TV, I first remove some old wires. After that I connect the motherboard to the switch. In order to turn on the computer, the switch must be pulled out and pushed in again. Later I will use the other old switch as a reset button in the same way. This little PCB is required to adjust the screen settings of the LCD. Maybe it could be possible to install it somewhere on the front, but for now I am mounted inside the enclosure. With the two halves joined, all that remains is to cut a hole in the back of the plastic cover in order to make the metal back panel accessible. With that being done, the enclosure is fastened with screws. Some peripheral devices are connected And ta-da! The Fallout style computer is ready for operation. So I hope you liked this little idea. Maybe some of you are interested in doing something similar. But no matter what, I hope to see you soon. survival in the Arctic, the United States Army has established an unprecedented nuclear-powered Arctic Research Center. This is the story of Camp Century, the city under ice. 
It was in May 1959, after more than a year of preparation, that a small party of Army engineers conducted the final search to select a site for Camp Century. Listen now to the voice of Captain Tom Evans, the young officer who was in charge of the construction of the camp. The crewmen were protected by a shield of approximately eight feet of water as they lowered the fuel elements into the fuel storage tank. Later, each of these steel and uranium bars would be transferred underwater to the nearby reactor core. Every step of the testing was meticulously monitored and regular announcements made to the workers assigned to the loading crew. Total U-235 content of the assembled core is 13.376 kilograms. Coefficient of reactivity, 0.935. The assembly is still subcritical. When all preliminary tests were completed, we began to transfer the fuel elements one by one and started loading the reactor core. 